learn a better way to not be able to walk away from God. Just like this. <laughs> All right, here's next
great segue into our fifth prayer point, which is, Lord, help me to know and to love your word. You know, we're going through those points. Let me know and to love your word. Because what Jesus responded to every temptation with what? God's word. Satan comes to him and he says, Jesus, make these stones into bread. Do a miracle. Save yourself. And Jesus said, it is written, man does not live by bread alone. He says, come and worship me. Bow down to me, uh, Jesus, and I'll give you all of the nations of the world to rule over because they've been given to me. And Jesus said what? It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then he said, took him to the pinnacle of the temple, remember, and said, jump off, the angels will catch you. And actually Satan is quoting scripture. So be careful because Satan knows the Bible too. But he didn't go what it really meant. And so what did Jesus say? Hey Satan, it said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So in the midst of that, the scripture was, was forefront in Jesus overcoming the temptation. But he knew the word. He was the word. And that was so important to him. Why? Why do we need to know and love God's word? Why do we pray that? All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that the man and woman of God may be thoroughly equipped to do good work. We are called to do good work, and if you want to be equipped to do that, sometimes we say, well, I can't do that. I'm not equipped. The Word of God will give us everything we need if we look for it with understanding to equip us to live in this life and to do what God calls us to. By my seminary model. Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. That's where I went to school. It provides guidance to us. Where am I supposed to go, Lord? How am I supposed to move forward? Where are we supposed to, 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 to do next? Or what are we supposed to do next? And it's the word. We'll find it there. I trust you. You'll find it there. Now when we talk about denying yourself those things and getting in the way of God, what, what's getting in my way? Lord, well, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrates to the dividing point of soul and spirit, joins and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So if you want to know what we're supposed to be doing or what's in the way, read the Scripture. Now, nothing in creation can escape from God. So that's why we need to know, not just read them, but to know them. And, and because the, the scriptures are so important to us, but yet, uh, average, 85-some uh, percent of people believe that there's a God and that they have a Bible in their house. Do you believe that? You know, we have so many people that claim, I've got a Bible. In fact, the average household has 4.7 Bibles in it. But do we really know what it says? Uh, they, the Barna Group does a state of the scripture, state of the Bible, uh, every year, and for the average American, I'm not saying we're average, I think we're above average. We hear more scripture in our, our church services than most people will read in months. And yet, we read it from here to there, and we don't always put the story together. It's surprising when I asked, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, last week, name the Ten Commandments. That's pretty basic, right? I don't think anybody did that. Now you may have put them in your head in order. They, the four gospel writers, most Christians can't do that. And then when we, we muddle the scriptures together because we've got to know the Bible. When we do, why? It helps us to know God. If we're going to do God's will, we might want to know God. It's God's revelation of himself to us. He reveals what he wants to us of his own character of his will, of his salvation. Everything that God, I mean, if we say in our ordination vows, the, the Holy Scripture, I believe the Holy Scripture, the Old New Testament, to contain everything necessary for salvation. We know that God's will is found in the Scriptures. We know that God's character is revealed in the Scriptures. And we know God is, if we want to know him, that's where we can find him. His law, we want to know right from wrong, what, what does God accept, what does God not accept, we don't make that up. His purpose for the church 
his purpose for our daily lives. And if we want to know what love really looks like, it's in the scriptures. And it helps us with life. We have such a tool. We have a tool that is, that is unparalleled. The Bible helps us with daily life. It teaches us what a family is supposed to look like. How the children are supposed to do with their parents. How the parents are supposed to relate to their children. How a husband and wife are supposed to get together and relate to each other. It tells us how we're to train our kids up into the knowledge of the Lord. It tells us how to live life and in our other personal relationships, all of our relationships, about serving one another. It's there in the scriptures. The scriptures help us to overcome temptation. If you're tempted to do something you're not supposed to do, the scriptures can help us. It overcomes anxiety. There's, there's ways in there that says if you, you know, are, are rooted in God, in my word, then, then, then even you will have the peace of God that passes understanding. It, it helps alleviate suffering, but it helps us to cope with suffering. I mean, it's in the scriptures. It gives us hope, comfort, guidance, wisdom, and so why do we need to know them? Oh my goodness, it's, it's, it's the tool that God has graciously given us. And do we read, mark, learn, inwardly digest? Do we know the story from beginning to end? Do we know who Jehoshaphat was? Do we know the year that Josiah died, what happened? You know, these are things that are incredibly important to our growth when we know we can grow into the fullness of God. So, give us greater love for your word. Help us to be doers of that word. Not just hearers only, only. And we ask your word to abide in our hearts. And then, and then quickly, number six, the Great Commission. We pray, Lord, ask that we would give us boldness and courage to share our faith. And we pray for those who don't need to know you in a life-saving faith. That is the purpose of the church. And we're actually praying to God that we can fulfill the very purpose for which he forms us. Because... The, the, that, 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 we, uh, that the people we know need to come to a life-saving faith, we pray for them. And those who are falling away from their faith, we pray for them. And we offer them up to God. But it takes courage to do that. It takes courage to do that. Norman Cates, a preacher, shared a story about a guy who prayed this prayer every single morning. Lord, if you want me to witness to somebody today, give me a sign to show me who it is. One day he found himself on a bus right next to him. This timid Christian anxiously waits for his stop so he can get off the bus, get me away from this guy, and then before he could get that, that very nervous about the man, the big guy bursts into tears and starts to cry. And he says with a loud voice, I need God in my life. I need to be saved. I'm a sinner. And my life is a mess, and as he's weeping, he says, he says, I need I can anybody in this bus tell me how to come to God? So the guy who was praying there, looking for a sign, looks up and he says, and, and the man said to him, Could you teach me this? Could you tell me how to be saved? And, and the guy starts praying. And he said, Lord, is, is that a sign? That I'm <laughs> we have so many opportunities. We were talking yesterday, and we shared the fact that a lot of people didn't know this. We had a wedding yesterday. It was quite a, a clash of cultures. But Susan and David, how did they get to this church? Betty O'Connor knew Susan from something, ran into her in the store. Susan said, I, I, we're really looking for a church that we both can appreciate. I, I you know, I, I, I'm Anglican, he's Catholic. We're looking for a place where, and every time we go to something, Either he doesn't or I don't like it. And so Betty said, why don't you come to All Saints and see? Give it, come and see. That was the invitation. We're having an outdoor service. That was two years ago. Remember that one? And maybe you like it. And they both fell in love with the church. And their, and their faith has is, is even grown. Uh, and they got married, finally. You know? And I don't want to get into their situation, but it just took an invitation. It just took the willingness to share and ask. And we, we do have those opportunities. I really believe God will put, them into, put us into those opportunities. So what is the Great Commission? What's our purpose? Last year, 
our whole Lenten series was living into our purpose as a church. As William Temple said, we're the only organization that is formed for the people that are not, uh, for the benefit of the people who are not members of it. William Temple was a uh, Archbishop of Canterbury. So the commission is, this is what Jesus wants us for us. All authority in heaven and the earth has been given to me. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. I am with you always to the end of the age. Paul said, let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. So what was the mind of Christ Jesus? Jesus said, the Son of Man came into the world to seek and to save that which is lost. That's his mind. Do you have that mind? We, we talked about this much last year, and we're going to continue. We are going to continue. Do you know that everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved? That's what Paul tells us. But how can they call on the one they haven't believed in or heard of? How can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? How can they hear without somebody preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they're sent? That is the most logical Reason, uh, you know, reason for us to share our faith. But, but can, can it get any clearer than that? It is written that. Remember, I asked because I, I remember Hillary remembered this. How beautiful are your feet? Because it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good things? Are we doing and fulfilling our purpose? Or are we, you know, as they say, instead of fishers of men, are we the keepers of the aquarium? So this is from God who reconciled himself to us. We have a mission of reconciliation, joining things together. Through Christ, he gave, the ministry, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. If God was reconciling the word world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them, that's the beauty of the gospel, and he has committed, oh, this is it, he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. That's our message. We, therefore, are Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. You know, ambassadors don't come in with the, and set up in a, in a foreign country with their own agenda of their own story. They are ambassadors of the one who sent them. And we are, we, you, are ambassadors of Christ. Are we representing God in this world? And then finally, Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest. And that's what we're praying. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would give us boldness and courage to share our faith. Boldness and courage, because like that guy in the bus, I, I, you know, we're probably sitting there going, not me. But if we have the courage and boldness to do that, you'll be surprised. And we pray for those we know who need a life-saving faith in you and those who know the truth but aren't living up to you. We need to pray. The beginning of evangelism, the beginning of sharing of the gospel, the beginning of us going forth in faith begins with praying for those who we know need God. You would be, you would be surprised. We pray for you. Your mom. We pray for you. We pray. We pray. Anybody have something to pray for them? Okay, moms, you got to pray for them. your kids. Should we pray for me? Well, it's my mom. <laughs> but pray for those who need to know the Lord. Like, you'll be surprised. You won't be surprised. You will be thrilled when God comes through. We ask the Lord, we pray for those who need to know that life-saving faith and who's not living up into their faith. And then give us the courage to share with them. You never know what's going to happen, but I, I say God is going to answer that prayer because that is dead center of the will of God. So who gets to share the faith? You do. Yay. And I would just end with this little story. Lake Ford. Anybody ever heard of Lake Ford? Uh, we heard Lake Ford preach in the 70s. Lake Ford used to be the, one of the preachers in the Billy Graham crusade. And he would go before Billy Graham. Billy Graham often would preach just on a Friday night or a Saturday night. 
Late before it would preach like Wednesday and Thursday before warm up the crowd, get things going. Late before was speaking at an open air crusade in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Billy Graham was coming the next night. And and and, and he but he arrived the day early. And so Billy Graham put on a pair of uh, sunglasses and a hat, sat in the rear of the crowd, and, and no one could recognize him. So directly in front of him, there was an elderly gentleman who seemed to be listening intently to Lady Ford's message. And so Lady said, when I invited people to come forward as a sign, an open sign of their commitment, Billy Graham decided to do a little personal evangelization. So he leans and tapped the man on the shoulder and said, would you like to accept Christ? And, and I'll be glad to walk you down so that, and to accompany you to the front. And the old man looked up and up and down, thought it over and said, nah, I think I'll wait until tomorrow when the big gun comes. <laughs> but little did he know, the big gun was sitting right next to him, inviting him to give his life to the Lord. We, we can do that. We can do that. Somebody invited me. Somebody invited Susan and David. Somebody invited you to come to know Christ. And the Lord invites us all. And we are called to invite and challenge and share. So that's what we're praying. We're praying that we know the Word so that we know the will of God. And we know the Great Commission and we're how to do it so that we can live into the full purpose for which we have been called into the kingdom of God. And that uh, is some length and disciplines to think. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.